Uh, Les Firewater is a collaboration between open source, government, academia, business, not for profit, and the geospatial communities. And what really attracted me to uh, this this effort is how it, uh, open data interacts with uh, natural hazards, bushfires. Um, everybody assumes that we all have data. We all have access to data. Like there's satellites, we all know where everything is, right? It's a bit different and hopefully Leslie can tell us uh, more about it. Thank you so much and uh, hello to all the uh, open uh, community out there. Um, lovely to be here. And yes, uh, it's very exciting that the, um, uh, this, the, actually, let me just stop there. I've got a bit of um, feedback here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it's good. All right, I'll keep going, thank you. So let's start this video. So this Mapathon, yeah, it was about collecting data and you're right, we think that we have this data, but in fact, we actually don't. And the data we were collecting for the Firewater Mapathon was all about the static water infrastructure. And government doesn't actually have some of this data and it's a reliance on a number of communities, open sources, one, uh, but also the academic sector, our business sector, our nonprofit organisations, and of course, our participants participants and geospatial community out there who participated in this mapathon. It was a really exciting day. I loved it. But there was some seriousness behind it. As you say, we had um, in our uh, 2019 to 2020, the bushfires burn over 18.6 million hectares of land. Now, that is the size of the United Kingdom for those who don't just realise the extent of these fires. The bushfires, as you can see there in red, when the New South Wales area, northern and eastern Victoria, kangaroo uh, island uh, to the left of the screen there, and Canberra, our capital city. Oh, Leslie, just a moment. Could you share your screen for us? Thanks. Ah. Oh. You should be seeing it. Just one moment. Hey, there we go. Well, yep. that was a shame, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Could you, could you screen for us, Leslie? Yeah, we're coming up. <laughs> well, you only missed the uh, this the cover shot. <laughs> it's not working. Just one moment. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Thanks. Hey, terrific. Thank you. So now you can see there the areas in red that were the extent of the, the burnt area. So um, there was 34 people who died um, saving people and saving their homes. And, and that's a hugely sad aspect. And so is it the fact that there were so many animals that died in this fire. The fires were so big that we actually pulled in, the government pulled in reinforcements, our Australian Defence Force, but also our neighbouring countries, um, New Zealand, Singapore, Canada, the United States. And you can see in the top there, our Fiji and the Fijian army arriving uh, there to come and help put out these fires. Now, the geospatial community was uh, in full force as well. We forget sometimes that behind the scenes in these disaster management centres, uh, the mapping teams are, are madly running around, uh, you know, collecting data about the fire trajectories. And also at this time, and we another thing we forget about our geospatial people is they get tired too. They're working around the clock, uh, like the firefighters. And so we do have in each of our states a volunteer group that are trained in disaster response GIS activities, and they come on board to assist our uh, mapping fellows. The first um, uh, mapathon we had was actually all about recovery. And uh, we were looking at where the burn infrastructure was. The uh, National Bushfire Recovery Agency had just been set up and they were uh, out looking for data and they were getting a lot of data, but not a lot of good data either. Um, and it just showed where some of the uh, information is lacking. We need that information on the ground. The um, SSSI community, uh, put out the call to action. They uh, contacted the SSSI 
office, uh, particularly in Western Australia, our uh, organ, our uh, regional committee here got heavily involved. And uh, how could they help? They were asking how could they help? So um, we contacted a number of government agencies and uh, the notion was that to help, we needed to collect damaged uh, infrastructure to support impact assessment. For that bushfire uh, recovery map of there was over 600 participants uh, worldwide and we collected 15,000, uh, over 15,000 edits uh, in just six hours. Now the fire water mapathon was the next step. Now this is a focus on preparedness mapping. We're coming into our new fire season. And the task here was to collect the static water supply. And I mentioned that some of this data is missing from our foundation spatial data framework, the water theme within that. There's a number of themes. This is about the water theme. You can imagine for government trying to keep track of where the water tanks are and how they change, difficult task. Uh, so that information hadn't been collected. And yet there was this fire water app created by the Water Warriors uh, with the Growing Data Foundation. Uh, and they wanted uh, and had the idea of showing where firefighters could get water, but of course they didn't have the data. So we put out the call to our GIS community and surveying community out there and uh, 400 uh, plus participants and it was a 24 hour mapathon and this time it was over 40,000 edits. We're still counting them actually. I'm, I'm waiting for um, uh, the figures to come out. But as we shut down on the day, 37,000 features. So the key thing for me and what I loved about this mapathon is that it was a joining of all these different communities. The open source community played a big part. Um, open source um, street map community were validators on the day, making sure this data was correct. Of course, we needed the support for government. We've got to collect data and the data is available as soon as it goes in open street map. But of course, we wanted it to be also available to the government agencies and to look at those supply chains was an interesting um, exercise to do. We had the support of the Intergovernmental Committee for Surveying and Mapping, so that's the lead mapping agencies in each state. And hands-on were Geoscience Australia, VicMap and Parks Victoria. And Parks Victoria are the um, going to be the custodians of the data that was collected. Of course, it's always available on OpenStreetMap, but also the fact that the data is now being used by government. And that's quite a first because we don't often hear these um, crowdsourcing exercises and how government has embraced that data within their authoritative sources. Businesses were a key part. NGIS Australia were the ones that put all the technical stuff together. The, we had millions of dollars worth of imagery provided by Nearmap, Planet and Airbus. Software came from Esri, One Spatial and Safe Software. Red Cross uh, heavily involved providing uh, teams of people to uh, collect data. And of course, um, we had people supporting our venues where we held the mapathon in person. Uh, that was for our first mapathon. GHD, Jacobs, Hydro Tasmania, Veris, Leica and Hexagon. The professional bodies. Now, I just want to point out in, within the SSSI, we have a disaster management and recovery special interest group. One thing this group is doing is organising and running these uh, Mapathon events, but we are looking at a bigger picture volunteer effort for uh, our members and GIS professionals uh, looking at uh, overseas and development opportunities uh, for volunteers. That's another story for another day. Uh, in fact, I'm talking about that next week. Um, the SSSI, Young Volunteers, Eurisa GIS Corps and the FIG Volunteer Community are super uh, in bringing on all uh, the people to contribute and collect that data. And of course, our VGI community. Uh, between the mapathons, we've had over a thousand registered and a bit hard to tell. We think there's probably more because some people register as groups. And of course, there's 59 countries. So this is quite an extensive effort um, and a, a reach there uh, to our community. Okay, so let's just talk about the Firewater Mapathon. I mentioned the foundation data. So this data is used for multiple uses and uh, around climate change, resource, water resource management, 
flood prevention, emergency management, risk mitigation, and the list goes on. So knowing where the water is, is about building community resilience. Now, let's just talk about the Mapathon process. Um, we start with the request. Um, so we know that what we are collecting is going to be used. We're defining the mapping area and then seeking out through our supporters in the business area to source that great imagery. And I'm going to show you some of this fantastic imagery. We're very lucky. Now, Tom mentioned legal stuff and there's, of course, a lot of licensing that needs to be managed there. And then we rely on training as well to make sure that we are to the best of our ability getting the data that's collected as the highest quality and the young professionals uh, develop those training manuals. And then came the collection on the day and of course the OSM community supporting the validation. We're right now at the time where we're looking at the data extraction and delivering that to um, uh, to government. I say extraction, it, it stays there. It's just we're going to have a copy that now will go through to government. And of course, there's a little bit of processing that needs to happen because we need to remove the duplicates and harmonise the models between that OSM model and the government model. But great to see the uh, open source and the government communities working together. Okay, so the hot tasking manager was used to set up the project areas and you'll be familiar with that. And of course, most of you will be familiar with the editing um, environment in OpenStreetMap. What we also had was our Firewater Connect, which was the Discord channel and people related on the day. And this was a lot of fun, actually, a lot of a great community spirit. It was also a help center for people asking questions. Uh, what did uh, make me smile is it's as the Australians were saying good night, uh, there was a message popped up from uh, the UK. Uh, the Brits are here. We'll take over now, they said. <laughs> it was a really great community spirit there. A lot of fun. You can see nerd alert. I'm enjoying this, uh, someone says. Is that cool? <laughs> I'm not sure. We also ran competitions on the day. I mean, you can imagine um, there's some uh, interesting terrain. Look, someone even found an aeroplane. We were quite uh, incredulized over that. And then, of course, um, this imagery was so precise uh, that we were provided with. And I'll just show you here. We can see the surfer carrying his surfboard. I think that's pretty remarkable uh, imagery. I can even count the number of hay bales on, on the uh, Im image in the center there. Okay, so we also had a playlist. Uh, people could add their music. A lot of um, people trying to be funny here, um, about, a lot about waterfalls and uh, rain. Have you ever seen the rain? Um, and because it was such a good community, everyone was putting up these um, emojis and and every time we had a bit of a win, we'd reached a milestone. Uh, someone said, you are awesome. So that was great. It's a great community spirit. But of course, there's the serious of this and um, the growing faith sorry the growing data foundation had developed this water app as I said and uh, it's actually a web app at the moment but needs to be migrated to a mobile app it is in development they've won an award number of awards uh, through the GovHap competition and this um, app is using the open street map as the base map they're not all only showing where the water tanks are, but they're also putting sensors on those water tanks. So the firefighters can actually tell how much water is in those water tanks, because of course that's another problem for them. Um, you think of mobile phone towers going down in, in these, when these bushfires occur, um, these sensors all operate on the low cost, low range radio technologies. So it's um, excellent uh, application as I say, but of course it needed the geospatial community to collect the data. Now, we can't collect the data uh, in one mapathon, as you can appreciate, Australia is very large. So we, uh, prior to the mapathon, we worked with the Maxar uh, to undertake a Maxar challenge to use their imagery to uh, look at how we could use the Mapathon data collected as training data to support deep learning, um, machine learning models uh, so that we can start to see how we can 
uh, identify these water tanks and dams and swimming pools automatically. So we've just finished that challenge. Uh, it was a great piece of fun as well. And uh, now the next step is to use that data from the Mapathon to improve that model. And, and we're up to that stage at the moment. So stay tuned, there'll be more news. Okay, how to get involved. Um, please have a look at our SSSI Mapathon website. You can register your interest so that you get to hear about the next Mapathon. You do not need to be a member. Uh, it's all about being part of the community. Also check out the Growing Data Foundation uh, network. They do a lot of things uh, with this IoT or they call it the Things Network in South Australia. Have a look at what they're doing. They're doing a lot of stuff in nature, very much of interest for the open source community. Of course, uh, if you haven't used OpenStreetMap, I'm sure you have, but please check it out. And uh, please follow our Disaster Management Recovery Special Interest Group for more volunteer activities, um, which we are looking at doing more overseas development and uh, uh, more, as soon as we get to open up and life goes back to normal, we're looking at a framework there that will extend this capability. Have any questions, please uh, ask Joanna Gastovich from Triple SI. Um, we're really pleased to talk with you and anyone who wants to get involved, I'd love to see the phosphor com community involved in the future. That's, it's great fun. So with that, I'll leave you there and say thank you very much. Thanks, Leslie. That was really interesting. Um, could you clarify, did you use the uh, hot tasker, the humanitarian open uh, OpenStreetMap team, their tasker to help people identify which areas to work on? Yes, we did. Um, and of course, that allows us to check in, a user to check in onto a map tile, complete it, and then leave. Um, and no one else can interfere with the editing. So that was a really key point. And we had to have that to manage such a large group on this mapathon. You couldn't do that uh, manually aside those tiles. Uh, so hot tasking manager couldn't have done it without it. I've got a long question from Emma Haynes. She says, recently I heard on the radio how states do not have a shared standard on collecting COVID information. This is something in the spatial industry we know about when we work across borders. Is collecting the inf this, it's uh, collecting the information. How did the states ingest it into each of their different attribute formats? And and do you think it's going to lead to a single standard across the borders? I don't have an answer to that. I can say two things. One is I do know that now uh, Geoscience Australia have a number of their staff now working with the um, health agency, the Commonwealth Health Agency. They are aware of the need for standards and I would be looking to seeing what's coming out of that uh, very much so. It's not my area. But the other thing is with the uh, volunteer program that we're looking at setting up, it's not just about fires, it's about floods and it's about um, health and, and disease and, and how our GIS people can get involved in this tracking and tracing exercise. Of uh, course, there are training things you can do online, but how do we actually offer that coordinator um, for the community nationally is something that we're looking into. So I don't have the answer. It's a really, really good question. And I think you're probably right. There probably isn't any standards as yet. And it's something that needs to be tackled. And I'd hope that would be done by, uh, as I say, Geoscience Australia working with the health uh, sector. Thanks, Leslie. It's been great to hear about. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't get to hear everybody's applause around the region, but uh, I really appreciate it. And we look okay. forward to hearing more from, from your uh, efforts. Welcome, thank you very much.